Hello there and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to do something you should never do. I'm going to calculate how much I've spent on photography gear. More specifically, how much I've spent on large format photography gear. This is meant as a beginner's guide into what you might need and how much you might end up spending if you wish to get started with large format photography. I will go through what I actually bought, but also what I would buy if I were to get started today. But before we get into the details, I would like to mention a couple of things. Firstly, prices do vary, so keep that in mind. Secondly, when I say large format photography, I do mean 4x5 in this case. And thirdly, these are my opinions. As always, do your own research. With that said, let's get started. And we are starting with the most obvious, the camera itself. And well, there's three main things to consider when choosing a large format camera. Firstly, you have the design of it, which will dictate the size and weight of the camera, but also how sturdy it is. Secondly, what focal length do you like to use? Because large format cameras are limited on what focal lengths they can use. And this is true for the long and short. So make sure that the camera you wish to buy actually support the focal lengths you like to use. And thirdly, movements. I'm certain you've heard about large format movements. Kind of the point to large format photography, at least for me. To be able like, to tilt the front standard to extend the depth of field in a scene is really useful in some cases. And the amount of available movements will differ between camera models. However, I would suggest to not obsess about camera movements, at least not to a start. A little goes a long way. So what camera should you buy then? Well, you have three main types to choose from, generally speaking. You have your monorails. These are on a monorail with one front end and one back end. Often made out of metal, really sturdy and will allow all the movements you could ever think of. However, they are quite heavy and cumbersome to carry around and are primarily made for studio work. A signer is an excellent example of a monorail camera. And then you have your field cameras. These are lightweight and compact and were made for field work. However, they aren't as uh, sturdy as the monorails, but they will allow a fair bit of movements, if not as much movement as the monorails. The Intrepid is an excellent example of a field camera. And finally, there's the clamshell design cameras. These are often made out of metal, really sturdy and compact. However, they are a bit heavier than the field cameras. And these clamshell design cameras can be divided into two subcategories. You have your press cameras, for example, your Chrome graphics. These were meant for press work, so they are really compact and sturdy and you can handheld these cameras. However, they are a bit limited with the movements. And then you have the Technica cameras. These are like the hybrid between the press and the field cameras. So we retain this clamshell design and all the benefits of that, but also add in quite a lot of movements, often rivaling or surpassing the field cameras. The Linof Technica is an excellent example of a Technica camera. So there's your choices. Pick your own poison. I myself, I started with a Saba camera. And you are forgiven if you never heard about the Saba cameras before. It was this old Swedish manufacturer. They produced around 1000 to 1500 cameras back in the 50s. And I own one of them, which is kind of cool. And it's this camera here. It's a lovely wooden field camera. And it turned out to be a great starting point for me. And it also was fairly affordable, perhaps even cheap. For this camera here with the standard lens, I paid 430 euros. So not bad. However, it didn't stop there. I soon wanted to upgrade and buy one of my dream cameras. And it's this camera here. This is a Linhof Technica. More specifically, it's a Linhof Technica 5. And it is this marvel of German engineering. And Linhof is often touted as the Leica of large format manufacturers. With good reason. However, they aren't cheap. Or I wouldn't consider them cheap. For this camera, with the standard lens on it, I paid 1300 euros. It's not cheap, but still fairly affordable. 
but that begs the question, would I still buy the same cameras if I were to start over today? Maybe. I still probably would start with a field camera. I feel like that's the best starting point for most people, myself included. A field camera is fairly versatile, lightweight, compact and easy to carry around. So you actually end up using the camera and learning about large format photography. However, I would seriously consider buying a new camera. Just the fact that uh, large format cameras are produced new today is really cool. And to be able to support that, I think would be a good thing. And well, the Intrepid camera is probably the most famous one. And a new Intrepid 4x5 that costs you 435 euros. And that's not bad, even compared to used camera. And what I've heard is more than a decent enough camera to get started with. It looks like actually quite a good camera. However, the Intrepid isn't alone. There's plenty of large format manufacturers out there today. Uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of them, just to give you a sense of where prices are and give you a couple of options. I haven't tried any of these cameras, but they look like decent enough cameras of what I've been able to find out about them. You have the Ghibellini Proxima at 612 euros, the Stenopeikan Air Force at 730 euros, and the Under Aiken at 750 euros. So the Intrepid is by far the cheapest, but the others are still fairly affordable even compared to used cameras. However, do bear in mind these prices are without a lens. With a new camera you need to add the lens yourself. And a good used standard lens will cost you around 200 to 500 euros. So you need to factor that into those prices. Speaking of which, there's a couple of good to know about lenses. So let's get into that now. About large format lenses. As I already said, the normal or standard focal length on a 4x5 camera, that is a 150mm lens. If you're one of those that like to have the equivalent full frame focal length, you can just divide by 3, and that's a really rough guide for you. Another good thing to know about large format lenses is that it consists of three parts. Firstly, you have the lens itself, then you have the shutter, and then you have the lens board. Often at least the lens and the shutter is sold together, and sometimes with the lens board, and sometimes without. And when it comes to the lens boards, there's two things to watch out for. Firstly, the hole in the lens board needs to fit your shutter. And this is measured in something called copal sizes. Make sure those matches. Secondly, the size of the lens board differs between different cameras. This is the lens board for my Sauber camera, and it's substantially smaller than the one on my Linoff camera. So make sure that the lens board fits your camera. What lens should you buy then? Well, I would suggest looking into one of the four main manufacturers. You have the two Japanese ones, that's Nikon and Fuji, and then there's two German ones, Rolandsock and Schneider. And buying a lens from any of these manufacturers is usually a quite good lens. I myself, I started with this. This is a Rolandsock 150mm f9 lens. It was included with my Saba camera. It was an excellent lens to start with. When I later on bought this, my Linov camera, with it was this lens, a Schneider 150mm f5.6 lens. Also an excellent lens. And later on, I kind of wanted to add in a wide angle, so I bought this, a Schneider 90mm f5.6, also an excellent lens. A word of caution though, as always when buying used gear, it may need a bit of seal aing, that's cleaning, lubrication, adjusting. Like this lens here on my Linoff, the standard lens, needed a fur clean before it started working properly again. And with the body, the Linoff, I needed to do a couple of adjustments before it started working properly. And I did that myself. But if you aren't willing to do that, factor in at least a couple of hundred euros to have it sent away and done for you. How much will this cost you then? Well, as I said, I started with this, the Saba camera and the standard lens. And I paid 430 euros for that. Later on bought this, the Linoff camera, once again with the standard lens, and I paid 1200 euros for that. And I added in the wide angle, and that cost me 350 euros. So my total for the camera and lenses, that's 1990 euros. I could of course stay with the Saba camera, it's more than a decent enough camera for me and the work I do. 
However, the heart wants what the heart wants. And if I were getting started today, I would probably buy the Intrepid camera. And as I said, that costs about 400 euros. And adding in the cost of a good used standard lens, that's 200 to 500 euros, the total for the camera and the lens, that's 600 to 800 euros. But that's just for the camera and the lens. There's a couple more things you need. You do need a couple of accessories. You want to shoot some film, and for that you need a dark place to load that film. A darkroom bag or a tent is quite useful. And this Pedersen bag here, I paid 30 euros for that. And then you need a couple of film holders. I bought four of these from eBay. Used ones cost me 64 euros. You can buy the film holders new, of course, but they will be substantially more expensive. And I haven't had any issues with the used ones. I looked on eBay, they seem to be going for around 20 euros a pop. Besides the darkroom bag and the film holders themselves, there's a couple more accessories that I bought. Starting off, I bought this. This is a dark cloth. I bought it from Intrepid, but it is made by an American company that I've forgotten the name of, so I'll just put it on the screen. I paid 85 euros for that. And then I bought this. This is a cable release. I had an old one, but it was starting to fall apart, so I bought a new one. And this cable release here, it cost me 35 euros. And as a little treat to myself, I also bought myself a new spot meter. Oh well, it's a used spot meter from eBay. And it's this here. This is a Minolta spot meter M. I paid 168 euros for that. And then we have two camera specific accessories. Starting off on the Sabah camera here, I needed to replace the ground glass. I bought a new one from a guy on eBay that cost me 28 euros. And when I got my Linoff camera, I finally bought a Fresnel. And a Fresnel that will basically brighten up the ground glass for you. And that cost me 45 euros. And in an attempt to try and keep the list complete, I'm going to add in the cost for my tripod. I did have the tripod before I started with large format photography, but you kind of need a tripod when you are doing large format. And I use a Leo Photo tripod. I'm going to check the model name of it. It's the Leo Photo LS323C. So it's a carbon fiber tripod. That cost me 356 euros. And on it, I have a leveling base, the LB65, costing 85 euros. And finally, I have a geared held, the Leo Photo G2, and that cost me 181 euros. So, my total for these accessories alone, that's 977 euros. But you don't need to buy all of those things. If I were to get started with large format photography today, there's a couple of accessories I would buy. Some need to have and some nice to have. Starting with the need to have, you do need the film holders. I would buy three of them and I would buy used from eBay. Three of them will cost around 60 euros. Also consider the cable release a must have. And as I said, a new one that cost me 35 euros. And you also need a tripod. And if you don't already have a sturdy tripod, you'll need to acquire one. There's plenty out there to choose from and do your own research. But to keep the list complete, I'm going to add in my backup tripod. That's the Manfrotto 190X Pro 3. It's a sturdy, nice tripod. I've used it out in the field myself and it's excellent. And a new one with a ball head that will cost you 290 euros. Then there's a couple of nice to have. Uh, the dark cloth, well, strictly speaking, you could use your jacket to shield yourself or do a DIY solution. But I would probably still buy the Intrepid dark cloth for 85 euros. And then the thing I regret most not buying early on is the Fresnel. 
it brightens up the ground glass substantially. And it was the thing I found most tricky when starting out, to just view the dim ground glass. And the Fresno helps a lot there. I read that it can make focusing a bit tricky and you need to mount it properly on the camera. But I haven't had any issues and I strongly suggest getting a Fresno. And as I said, that cost 45 euros. So the total for the accessories, that would be 545 euros, including the tripod. If you exclude the tripod, that's 255 euros. I just realized I didn't mention the spot meter. And I do consider that a nice to have, not a need to have. Because an app on your phone will be good enough, especially if you're shooting black and white negative film, as that's quite forgiving when it comes to exposure. However, I do enjoy using a spot meter, and I would buy one down the road. But for a start, I would start just using an app. Because that's quite a lot of things to learn and getting used to when it comes to large format photography. But if you wish to just straight away buy a spot meter and go down that route, by all means do so. As I said, the one I have, that cost me around 170 euros. I would say that a good spot meter will cost anywhere from 100 to perhaps 500-600 euros. So just add that into the total cost, in that case. do need some film. And I started with this. This is Film Up and 100, 4x5, a pack of 50, that cost me 41 euros. And I like to develop my own film at home, uh, but I needed a new tank to be able to hold 4x5, and I bought the Yoba Multitank 2, and that cost me 88 euros. And I also needed a sheet film holder for that tank, and that cost me 70 euros. And I also bought some new chemicals. I bought the black and white kit from uh, Yoba as well, the Alpha black and white kit. That cost me 30 euros. So my total investment cost for film and developing, that's 229 euros. And I probably still buy the exact same thing again if I were to get started today. I would still start with Fomapan. It is an excellent film and I have gotten good results with that film and is probably the cheapest film you can get hold of. And that's a huge benefit when you are learning. And I do enjoy developing at home. I do enjoy that process. And I still would probably buy the Yoba drum and that sheet film holder. But there are other options out there, so do your own research there. But I do strongly suggest that you start developing at home if you don't already do so. Because the running cost will be substantially lower. How much lower, you ask? Well, I asked the local camera lab what it would cost to develop 4x5 sheets. And I got quoted 8.5 euros per sheet of black and white. And well, compare that to developing at home, I did some calculations. And it would cost me around 1 to 4 euros to develop a sheet at home. A good average would be like 1.5 euros. So it's 7 euros cheaper per sheet to develop at home. Dividing that initial investment of 230 euros, divided by 7, after 33 sheets you reach a break even. So I strongly suggest start developing at home. <music> Final little detail, you need to turn the negative into a positive. And me being me, I bought an enlarger, a 4x5 enlarger, and that cost me 300 euros. However, I still like to digitalize my negative, 
And for that I used my digital camera and I bought a pixel later film holder with a light table and that cost me 105 euros. And I also used a couple of macro rings from Viltrox and they cost 45 euros. So my total for the scanning and printing, that's 450 euros. And my grand total, 3646 euros. However, I wouldn't buy the enlarger today. I would start just digitalizing the negatives. And for that, I would use the digital camera I already have, the lenses I already have, and the tripod I already have. Because that big 4x5 negative is quite forgiving. So you don't need the macro rings or a macro lens. However, I would still buy the pixelator film holder and a light table, even though you could probably manufacture something yourself. But for 105 euros, it is fairly affordable. So the total to get started with large format photography, all included, according to my calculations, would be 1,579 euros. I would say a realistic span would be from around 1,000 to 1,600 euros to get started. But my total, as I said, was 3,646 euros. As always, the sky is the limit. That begs the question, is it worth it? For me, most definitely. For you? Well, that's for you to decide. Next time, I think we go out and shoot something with the large format. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.